Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and a lot of things are going on in the world. We're going to be trying to cover some of that for you this morning here, um, and uh, of course, still here in Northwest Florida. Uh, hopefully, before too much longer, we'll get back to Tennessee here. A lot of things going on here, a lot of things we're having to deal with, so we do greatly appreciate your support uh, of the work that we do here, uh, because in a time like this, it is definitely uh, needful. So again, I want to thank you for those that are that are helping us. Uh, and just to, just a quick note, if you're wanting to do that, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Uh, the fastest way in a case like this is right here online uh, versus mail. Uh, but we do appreciate either way. However, God lays on your heart. Want to thank you for that. Uh, to this morning, I loaded a video, the real threat of AI, over on Patreon. And that's patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. In the description below, you'll be able to find the link to that. Uh, very interesting video that Elon Musk just put out. And I knew quite a bit about the things, uh, meetings he's had with the government. So I shared some of that information with you there. And of course, the, the, the truth is, he says, it is a real threat. And, uh, and try to fill in some of the blanks there of that threat that's coming. Uh, and that may not be a bad idea. I don't think EMP Shield would be as in, as, as far as in that case. That's more so because of the wars that are going on. Uh, but don't forget, you might want to consider getting an EMP Shield. Uh, and of course, if you choose to purchase any of them, or one, two, three, whatever you may do, when you go to add that to your cart on every single one, be sure to enter in the INL50 code. Uh, the INL50 code knocks off $50 off of every single one that you buy. So if you only need one, great. But if you need uh, several of them, as you can see, it remove $50. And also they contribute a, a percentage to us as well. So it, it's another way to support the work we do. All right, let's get, I don't want to, I don't like getting into that stuff to begin with, to start with. But I, there were just some things I wanted to make sure you knew about, especially the Patreon video and the event. Not everybody watches the whole video. And of course, Charcoal is in here trying to get me to play tug of war with the shoe. Not the right time to do it. Uh, listen, this was interesting. You know, I'd brought up uh, before uh, about the situation with the tanks coming in, the Abrams, the Leopards, etc. Would Russia not take them off while they're on the rail cars? Well, not on the rail cars, but uh, in Ukraine, Russia did take and attack a convoy that had. Uh, as you can see, one of the leopard, or at least this is what is reported in this uh, this particular thing here, uh, a leopard tank uh, convoy there. Uh, but it wasn't just, there's only one leopard tank that we've seen in this. But Russia did target that and took out one of those tanks there. So <clears throat> as Russia sees these moving to the battlefield, I guess they're not going to wait. They're going to go ahead and take out uh, those as, as they come along. Uh, Ukraine, though, is preparing for their offensive uh, their spring offensive here uh, inside the country there. But at the same time, while they're preparing for their spring offensive, uh, and, and, and they do have, they're showing videos of armored personnel carriers and things like that, carrying troops up to the front lines. Then you get things like this here, where it says a Ukrainian medic from the 228th Battalion, 127th Brigade, complaining about there are not enough medical personnel to treat the casualties. The second video, the soldiers from the battalion refused to fight, saying almost the entire battalion recycled. Uh, and what they mean by recycled, and those of you that can speak the language could hear this for yourself. Now the second guy here, he's going to be the one that talks about uh, the, you know, the, the whole thing got recycled. Обращаемся к народу Украины. Поддержите нас, потому что наших побратимов легло очень много, очень много раненых. Наше командование кидает на мясо, выставляя нас спецназом, обманом, не показывая барьерки, не доводя никакого, никакой информации до личного состава. 
Обманом закинул людей на Бахмут, выставивший спецназом, не имея никакого ни подготовки надлежащей, не имея, сука, никакой ни техники, не имея эвакуации. You know, the thing is, it's, very, it's a very bad situation on the front lines in this war because there's just so much heavy armament going on. And it has just become a meat grinding factory is what it's become for human beings. And uh, no matter how much offensive you might put back into it, it's just the people are dying by the tens of thousands. Uh, it's just horrible. Another thing, too, the Los Angeles Times reporting here, Ukrainian court puts Orthodox priests under house arrest, alleging he condones Russian invasion. Uh, the priest. <laughs> I mean, what? Uh, how much worse can it get, right? And, and and the thing is, because I have friends that are in Ukraine, I have been hearing about these things already. That if you uh, have any, um, in fact, it was said to me on one particular occasion there that uh, that a friend of mine that was there having, he was his daughter was being tutored. Uh, and the police came in and they did a raid on the apartment uh, complex, that is. But there, each apartment was there and he was there when it happened. And uh, they search your phones. If you're calling anybody in Russia, you're arrested. Uh, if you are, um, he said too, they asked if you're affiliated with any of the Russian Orthodox churches. If you are, you are to turn those people in. Uh, so it's not surprising. And then, of course, here they are putting on his, uh, they put him under house arrest. And so they put on a monitor on him to be able to make sure he doesn't leave uh, the, the facility. So, boy, it's just nuts, the things that are going on over there. So anyway, um, Israel, too, last night uh, were using Lebanese airspace to target no doubt they'll probably say when they do come out and say what they did it for uh, Iranian targets. They were near the Holmes countryside and Duba, uh, those places there as they launched several attacks inside of Syria. And uh, and then, of course, a, a friend of mine sent me this uh, particular video. I think this is in Oklahoma, if I wasn't mistaken. Or no, Little Rock, Arkansas. What I want you to see this. I mean, the size of the tornadoes are just yeah, insane. Uh, so let's like take a look at this here. I don't know how to back it up. Yeah, look at it. There, it's so wide in the screen there. I don't know if you can see that. It's we so wide. Awesome. It's nearly yeah, covering the entire that. screen. Excuse me, sir. Do you see that? So... Um, like I said, though, let me see. Maybe I can just refresh the page. Yeah, here we go. This will give you a better. There you go. Now you can see this. You can see it much better right there. Just the width of this thing. Massive tornado. Just like what happened in Mississippi the other day. Especially, I mean, you could, Arkansas, yes, you expect tornadoes this size here. But Mississippi having one like that the other day, that's so unusual. Charcoal, this is not time for you to be in here to play with me. So. Take your shoe and go play. Anyway, wanted to share that with you there. Also, too, going into Israel, many, many things are happening over there. The National Security Minister, Itmar ben Gavir is a tangible danger to the state of Israel. Former Israeli police chief Moshe Karadi said on Saturday in a uh, Shabbatar Bat event in Emek Hefer. Uh, that, so there is a lot of outcry that is happening in Israel uh, the protests continue to go on. We are in the midst of Israel's darkest period. Cardi claimed the fate of Israel's police and the IDF troubles me. Ben Gavir poses a tangible danger to the country and must be removed from his post as a minister as soon as possible. Cardi further said that Ben Gavir is actively seeking to implement his true ideology, racism and Jewish supremacy. This is not coming from Christians, friends. This is from Israelis saying this, uh, you know, and this is why we often try to tell you, you know, you know, watch what's happening in Israel. Very, very serious situation is happening. I'll put this link in the description below for you so you can see it. 
Uh, now, Netanyahu supporters came out in protest, and they did number in the thousands as well. But if you look at that in comparison to here, and I'm going to... Um, this is the counter ones, the anti-reform. Uh, reform. Okay, so the they're actually the protests there uh, against, let's see, I think we have, no, I don't have it up there yet. Uh, there were 150,000 protesters, uh, well, it's, well, it's right here, over 150,000 Israelis have hit the streets in Tel Aviv to protest against the proposed judicial overhaul, while you have, you do have thousands that are here protesting for the overhaul, but nothing in comparison to those that are against it. So... I'm only waiting to see when they're going to clash because naturally when you have two opposing forces like that, clashes are going to be inevitable. So hopefully that will not happen. Uh, they can get this resolved peacefully, but unfortunately it's not looking very, very prominent for that to happen. Also, senior ultra-Orthodox MK said wooing Gantz to join the government to balance the far right. And... That's Benny Gantz there, said the Attorney General has warned giving the government almost unrestrained power. During the meeting, the report said Gaffney conveyed the message that he would like to see Gantz and his centrist party join the coalition to balance it, a likely reference to the far-right Atzma Yehudit and Religious Zionism Coalition parties. Uh, the report said Gantz has recently reviewed other uh, messages from the coalition officials who were feeling out the option uh, of him joining the ranks of what is currently widely regarded as the most right-wing government in Israel's history. While the efforts were predicted to continue, Gantz has rejected them so far, likely due to the having been burned in the past by Netanyahu when the two formed a short-lived unity government in 2020. Now, of course, Benny Gantz is much like uh, Yair Lapid, uh, and his stance and views as well. This is Benny Gantz right here. He's a former Israeli uh, general as well, also defense minister uh, under that uh, short-lived uh, coalition with Netanyahu back in 2020. Uh, but uh, but in his in his to give you an idea, Yair Lapid says here there is one thing that extremists in the government didn't take into account. You, he tells the tens of thousands of anti-overhaul protesters assembled in Jerusalem, we won't shut up and we won't rest until the state of Israel has a constitution. The Yesh Atid leader adds to the crowds of cheers of constitution, constitution. And uh, but he uh, also says here the opposite. Yair Lapid tells demonstrators gathering outside the Knesset that no government gave us our rights, and no government will take our right. Uh, will take our rights. Uh, you know, I have to agree with him on that that part there. Now I know that they argue that what they're trying to say is that uh, as far as the Netanyahu's uh, coalition there is that there is not a balance of power. In other words. Uh, uh, like in most uh, governments, he says, in most democracies, this is his argument, you know, that uh, the government can appoint judges, like in the case of the president of the United States, whoever's president at that time can appoint the chief justices uh, for the Supreme Court. Uh, and they always do that, hoping to get enough of judges on there that share their view, uh, their political views. But the thing is, is in this overhaul of the government, the government is going to get more authority that overrides the Supreme Court completely. So it's not just uh, so simple as Netanyahu tries to point uh, to, to the rest of the world and trying to get favor uh, in what he's doing. So uh, the thing is, is like uh, Lapid says here, you know, the government never gave us our rights and they're not going to be the ones that take it away. Uh, but that's exactly what they would like to do. He says, if they want us to live here together, they need to respect our values. What's holy to us is not less important than what's important to them, Lapid says, likening democratic values to religious-led lifestyles and pro-settlement uh, pro priority, uh, excuse me, priorities. And, and that is where this really comes down to, because this far right-wing government that Netanyahu has put together to get itself back in power basically is wanting to bring about 613, as it's called, mitzvot, or laws, regulations, making Israel a complete Jewish state. No freedom 
uh, of religion. And, and I know that there are those that would argue and say, well, Netanyahu is really not for, he's not against freedom of religion, he's for the Christian people, things like that. Well, maybe right now to some degree he is, but unfortunately those evangelicals that support Netanyahu basically bow down to the prime minister and just obey anything he says, totally negating and neglecting the fact of what this type of government would mean for the Christians that live inside of Israel. Talk to them for a little bit about it, in fact. Uh, in fact, some of the ones that uh, we, we are going to try to do some interviews here ourselves uh, to bring that information to you so you can see what believers are facing there. And of course, many of them are afraid to even speak out because of the dangers uh, of speaking out because if his reform does pass, they will certainly be living in hiding uh, because these far right wingers that are in his government there want to oust them from the country completely. Uh, you know, so th this is not just a very simple matter that's going on. So it's pointing at the Knesset over his shoulder. Yolan says the prime minister has to bury the legislation, adding that he hasn't buried it yet. And what he's talking about there is he halted the legislation that they were pushing for for this reform, but he didn't bury it. He didn't get rid of it. He didn't destroy it. Uh, so no, yes. And of course, uh, we, we'd gotten one news clip there that somebody had sent to me about how that uh, Ben Gavir is going to be given a militia. So what's going to happen with that? I mean, Ben Gavir is already off the chain, a man that is a twice convicted uh, felon uh, working in the government in Israel. What's next? I mean, you know, it's almost, you know, it's, I think about Ben Gavir, I can't help but think about Barabbas. You ever think about that? They take Barabbas, they bring Jesus out, they bring Barabbas out. I mean, this is really what the case is all about, right? Barabbas and Jesus. And basically, Netanyahu gives you the choice of who you would like to run the country. And of course, they again have chosen Barabbas. That's exactly right. They've chosen Barabbas uh, to run the government of Israel. And that's exactly what they're going to get. And what was Barabbas? He was a murderer. And Ben Gavir, the love of the Kahani party, right? The Kahani movement. And here you go right here. How Mir Kahani's extremist ideas entered the Jewish mainstream. Well, a lot of people like to say, you know, well, that's just a little minority, the far right wing government. That's just a little minority trying to push all this. They're in power with Netanyahu, aren't they? And the Israeli people consider it enough of a threat that 150,000 have taken to the streets of Israel. You think about it. All right. Israelis are Israelis, just like Americans are Americans. And we have all different types of cultures in our country as well. Do we all agree? Of course we don't. But at least there is freedom here. You have a freedom to be who you are and who you want to be thus far. But give it time, because guess what? We're going to be controlled pretty soon, too. And oddly enough, you may end up being controlled by a little country out in the Middle East. Imagine that, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. That kind of brings me back to this video right here. And I think I ought to just play it. Once again, for those who fight with America and NATO's. And it, uh, let, me, let me just play the video. <laughs> My gosh. This is interesting here. Listen, listen to this here. I went into the State Department um, Near East section and found there was not one single Palestinian. All right. Now, this lady here, she goes into the State Department on Near East or Middle East affairs, right? Really would probably be the better way to put it there. Affairs there. And she is saying her first statement is there's not one Palestinian that she is the wife of a, um, a, a U.S. I, I don't know, high ranking officer here in the United States. I don't know if it'll say that in here or not. Let's listen in. Not one single um, Muslim religious uh, Saudi, you know, Jordanian, not one Christian Protestant, not one Roman Catholic. Not one plain old American, whatever, from Corn Pump. Every single person in all of those offices were either Zionist, Israelis, whatever. And they had pictures all over the wall of Israel, Israel, Israel. They had magazines, Israel Today, 
you know, I was given a copy of one. Um, and there were yarmulkes, you know, mm -hmm. and in the uh, uh, Israeli writing. In other words, Hebrew. And I, I asked one of the women after having gone through about, you know, four or five of these offices, I said, because I was pretending like I really, you know, wanted, I was just kind of wanting to know where, where the Palestinian office was, you know. She said, well, we handle all of that. We handle all of that. And this so, is the State Department, the... Near East. The, the part that handles Israel, Jordan, okay. all of these. Egypt. Yeah, yeah. the Near East section. Uh -huh. Yeah. It was just totally dominated by... Totally. Israeli. Totally. Uh, I went into the... Imagine State that now, right? Imagine that. Um, let's see here. Yeah, the U.S. Army Naval Intelligence Officer Kay Griggs. Let's see. Uh, she's the wife of a high-ranking U.S. Army Naval Intelligence Officer Kay, Kay Griggs. And she was saying this about our State Department. And it's totally dominated by uh, Zionists, etc. in there, making all the decisions. Everything, everything that goes on, whether for Egypt, whether for Jordan, whether for uh, the Palestinians. You know, no balance in there. She said not even a Christian was in there. I mean, think about it, right? I mean, th this is nuts. This is nuts. Uh, and, and I can't, I hate to tell you, friends, I, I know people right there in D.C. that have told me the same. It is ran like that. The, our entire judicial system ran like that. Then you wonder why, uh, like Florida is fixing to pass these laws that they're going to pass to criminalize you if you even speak against Israel. You know, we join the voices, and I don't, when I say the voices, we don't necessarily share the ideology of the left in Israel, but we join the voice with the people of Israel, the Israelis, that know that what is happening in their country will be detrimental if if they get away with it. And, and, I, and I shouldn't even say if, I believe they will get away with it. I do believe they will because to me it is a beast kingdom that is rising. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Don't forget, sign up on Patreon there. Uh, we are always trying to put out interesting information for you there. And I am about to do a video here on Danoon Institute on a incredible testimony that happens. One of the first ones that ever happened in my life back when I was about 19 years old. Uh, over a brain tumor. I may share two of those. And so if you know someone suffering with a brain tumor, uh, it may be encouraging. I mean, there, of course, there's, this happened many, many years ago. There's a lot of medical stri strides that have been made since then. Uh, but I think for those that, that really are, lose, let's say, lost all hope and are looking for a miracle, looking for God to intervene. He still can intervene. And in this case here, it was a combination of both. It was the hand of the doctors in both cases. But, uh, but an amazing story I think will bless you all. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.